Hello everyone, my name is Erica Ebel Engel and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Excella, the internal fitness company. And I am here today to talk to you about the importance of listening to your gut and what that means. So for starters, just a brief introduction. Like I said, my name's Erica and I'm a 38 year old biochemist entrepreneur. I have degrees from MIT and Boston University School of Medicine and I have decided to dedicate my life to studying the gut and the gut microbiome. I've been really fortunate over the course of the last few years to uh, have been requested to do interviews for a whole variety of different publications as a thought leader and expert in gut microbiome health and obviously uh, as CEO and co-founder of Excella, uh, a company that was started about six years ago. We are dedicating a great deal of our time to trying to help people to improve the health and state of their gut and microbiome. Also over the course of the last few years, we have been really fortunate to be working with professional athletes and athletics teams, uh, America's Cup Team Oracle USA, uh, the sailors from that team, uh, the Sunweb, which is a Tour de France team, and one of our poster children is uh, Ironman athlete uh, Sarah Pampiano, who ever since being involved in our program has been consistently performing amazingly, winning uh, many, many of her races. So we are very fortunate that uh, this technology Technology has been used to improve athletic performance for uh, many different athletes that we work with. So why am I here today? Well, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the most important organ of the body, and that is the gut and the gut microbiome. So for starters, let's talk a little bit about what is the gut and what is the gut microbiome. So it's all the different organs from mouth to colon or from entry to exit, uh, we like to say, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, and all of the little critters that live in there, the bacteria, the fungi, viruses, and cells. And ultimately, one of the most important things to keeping your gut really healthy is to have diversity. So these creatures live in there. Um, they're all in a, in a state of sort of Darwinian competition. They balance each other out, the good and the bad. And so we'll come back to this a little bit later, but diversity is key. So having a healthy gut is important for a whole variety of different reasons. Um, it helps you to have better energy, to get sick less frequently, to have better mental clarity, and to have great emotional well-being. Versus research is showing that if you have poor gut health, things like Alzheimer's disease or autoimmune conditions or emotional disturbances or even diseases like diabetes can become greater risk factors or can become more prevalent. So our theme for today is you are what you eat. So what does that mean? Well, as a child, you probably recall when your parents tried to foist broccoli or if you were really, really lucky, uh, Brussels sprouts on you telling you how important it is to have a healthy diet and saying you are what you eat and you looked very skeptical, similar to the young man in this, in this image, uh, looking at them saying, I don't think that's true. But the reality is, uh, it turns out that it really is true. Eating poorly can do a variety of different things, but two really major ones. One, it can prevent you from getting the nutrients that you need to stay healthy. And more importantly, it can actually damage and change the actual composition of your gut and the gut microbiome, which will ultimately prevent you from getting nutrient breakdown the way that you need it. So let's look at three different molecules that you get uh, from dietary intake, very specifically from dietary intake. So the first is a molecule called tryptophan. You've probably heard of this, uh, the tryptophan-induced coma that comes after having Thanksgiving turkey. But tryptophan can also be found in other types of foods, things like eggs and chia seeds. Now tryptophan is really important because your body takes in the tryptophan and actually synthesizes it, breaks it down into a variety of different products. Things like serotonin, which you've probably heard of, the happiness molecule, and melatonin, the molecule that helps you with sleep. So ultimately, if you have low tryptophan, meaning you're not consuming enough tryptophan, or your body is unable to digest and break down your tryptophan, um, no matter how many roses or chocolates or diamonds your significant other buys you, you're just never gonna be happy, which is very sad, uh, or you won't be able to count sheep and get good sleep. The second molecule is called tyrosine. So it is uh, also an amino acid. It's found in things like nuts, lentils, seeds, edamame, 
So tyrosine is really important because the body breaks it down and turns it into things like dopamine, which is incredibly important for initiative-oriented behavior. It's that thing that gets you up off the couch to go and, and do other activities. Or epinephrine or adrenaline, which is known as the fight or flight molecule. So again, if you have low levels of tyrosine, either because you're not digesting enough of it or because you're not eating enough of it, you would be like the guy on the left in this slide, unable to have any kind of motivation to get off the couch, or should you happen to be chased by a mountain lion at some point in your life, you'll have a very similar reaction to the emoji in this picture, neither of which is particularly good. The third molecule is called indole-3-lactic acid. Um, it's a little bit different from the other two. It's found primarily in fermented foods, things like kimchi, sauerkraut, uh, or kefir. It's interesting because it gets converted in a very different kind of way. So the body will take in your indole lactic acid and a variety of the different bacteria that are found in the gut will essentially suck it in and convert it into a very important molecule called indole propionic acid. Indole propionic acid or IPA is one of the strongest antioxidants in the body. Now, what's an antioxidant? Well, there are many processes in the body that create these compounds called free radicals. Free radicals go and damage cells, they damage DNA, they can lead to things like cancer. So your antioxidants actually go and help chew up your free radicals, which obviously keeps you healthy. So they're super important. Now, eating these types of foods is necessary, but often not sufficient. So what do we mean by that? So healthy gut, microbiome is really needed to execute the conversion processes you need so that your body gets the nutrients that it needs. So this is one of my favorite slides, but what is a healthy microbiome? So here we have an image of a diverse and healthy microbiome. On the left, you have four different types of emojis that represent all kinds of different things. One that represents bacteria that digest veggies, some that digest meats or breads or oils. Now let's say that you decide that you're going to change your diet and eat foods that are only high in fat. Things like hot dogs or ice cream or, or cheese pizza, which although sounds really wonderful right now, um, isn't so great for your overall health. So what ends up happening is your gut starts producing more of the types of bacteria that are necessary to break down the types of food you're eating. So ultimately, your body's gonna start skewing the diversity of the bacteria in the gut to produce more of the bacteria that only digest oils. And eventually, those guys outcompete all of the other types of bacteria that are in there, which suddenly leaves you with a much less diverse and unhealthy microbiome. So questions that come up frequently are, you know, can you reverse this process once it's started? And the answer is typically yes, but it could take a very long time. Um, sometimes, rarely, you might outcompete some of the important bacteria that, for example, digest vegetables completely. And this is something that is obviously very, very unhealthy. But typically these processes can take months uh, to years to reverse. This is just an extension of the previous slide. So, the point here is that no matter what, the body is trying to, to take in your food and digest it and to create these building blocks even if you've damaged your gut. So here, um, there are two different images. On the right, the silhouette is showing the bacteria at the bottom that are taking in your food and digesting it and spitting out molecules into the body that are tr uh, trying to keep you healthy. On the left-hand side, you have a more diverse gut with a variety of different emojis that are able to ultimately break down various types of foods and spit them out uh, into the body and keep you healthy. Now the unfortunate thing is we do lots of lethal things to our gut and our gut microbiome. Many things in our lifestyle are really, really quite unhealthy for us. So processed foods, here are an example of, of things that are lovely to snack on. Sadly, they don't really contain a lot of tryptophan or tyrosine or indole lactic acid here. Uh, antibiotics. Antibiotics are really important. Um, obviously, they keep us healthy. They, they cure us of, of a variety of different um, infections. Uh, unfortunately, when you take an antibiotic, um, it doesn't discern between the good and the bad bacteria. So often, you can end up wiping out your entire microbiome, uh, which could take years or maybe never to rebuild. Stress. Everybody talks about stress is so terrible. Um, it is. Uh, when you really think about it, we could have a whole hour-long talk about the interrelationship between uh, the brain and the gut connection. But ultimately, what's important to know is that the brain and the gut are connected. Uh, the central nervous system, the enteric nervous system, is in fact directly connected to your gut. So when you think about it, when you're stressed, 
or have anxiety in your head, you feel it in your gut, you feel butterflies in your stomach, you have that sensation of discomfort uh, that also then, you know, triggers anxiety, goes back to your head. The two communicate back and forth with each other. So stress is ultimately very bad for the microbiome. We live in an aseptic world. Um, you know, we're constantly using products that uh, are trying to help us to be clean, and this is not great. It helps to destroy the microbiome and ultimately to uh, remove the diversity that you have in the gut. And this is one of my favorite images. You know, back in the old days, kids used to go outside, play in the dirt where they were exposed to all kinds of different things. Um, it helped to improve the diversity of their guts. But now, you know, predominantly, how do, how do kids play? They watch television, they're on their phones, they're on their iPads. They're not exposed to all these different microorganisms. And research is showing that there's a link between uh, this hyper clean environment and things like autism and ADHD. So what can we do about this? Not all is lost. The good news is there are things that we can do to uh, help to improve our guts. So what are those? Well, first of all, it's what I'm so excited about. Here at Excella, we spend a, a tremendous amount of time trying to think about ways to measure what is the functional state of the gut? What defines that? And then to create actionable solutions that can help people to improve their guts. And we do that through mindfulness, through nutrition, through supplementation, uh, and through lifestyle changes. And the good news is, like I said, you can actually make those adjustments and see real change. We actually call this improving your internal fitness. That's why we're called Excella, the internal fitness company. Uh, but we, we truly believe that um, your internal health starts in your gut. And so when you talk about looking at someone who is externally fit, uh, and really healthy looking on the outside, does that necessarily mean that they're internally healthy? No, so we're very much focused on trying to improve that here. So here are some helpful tips for things that you can do to help your gut. So we talked a little bit earlier about changing your diet, lots of things that you can do that, that would be really effective. Um, number two, to minimize stress, you can incorporate things like mindfulness, meditation, and exercise, uh, which are super, super healthy uh, breathing exercises. Exercise in general is wonderful. Just 15 minutes of walking a day can help with gut motility, keep you regular, but it also helps to stimulate the growth of certain types of bacteria that break down all these different variety of different foods. So exercise is really important. And then targeted supplementation. You know, we talk about supplements uh, and how they're used in, in society, but you know we are advocates of targeted supplementation. If you don't need it, don't take it. Supplements are medications, they're drugs. If you don't need it, don't take it. But you have to know what you need and how much of what you need. So you know, rather than eating 18 fish like in this image, if you just have one supplement, sometimes that can uh, really help uh, with, with some of those challenges. So the next time you're on the couch and you're feeling kind of lethargic and you don't really know why, or you're getting sick with some sort of upper respiratory tract infection for the seventh time this year and you're just so confused, you know, why is this happening to me? Listen to your gut. <laughs>